Well, hello, Calvary. My name is Robert Smith. I'm thankful for you joining us on this Friday morning for your word for the day. And as we approach Easter, we're continuing to look at some of the significant moments leading up to Jesus' death and resurrection. Earlier this week, Pastor Chad started to walk us through the seven statements of Jesus from the cross. And these tell us an awful lot about the mindset and situation of Christ and allow us to focus on what he seemed and, and signified as significant in those final hours. And I want to share with you Matthew 27, verses 45 and 46. And it says this, it says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, this is a passage that carries a bit of difficulty for us at the, the forefront, which we'll get into in a minute. But what's interesting is this is the only statement of Jesus from the cross that Matthew records in his gospel. So there's significance there that we have to look at. The other gospels each record some moments, but this is the only one from the book of Matthew from the cross. And as we do this, I think we all have to admit and recognize there's some difficulty in fully understanding what Jesus was going through in this moment and what he meant by this statement, because he's addressing the consequence to the relationship of the Trinity with his punishment there on the cross. And the Trinity is something that's so central to our understanding of God, yet something that we also have to admit stretches the limits of our human logic and understanding. And the church had some difficulty in consistently explaining and defining this as well. And so around the fifth century, they adopted what we now know as the Athanasian Creed, which is a statement of faith in several areas, one of which being the Trinity. At the beginning of the Creed says this, it says, we believe that we worship one God and Trinity and Trinity and unity, neither confounding the persons nor dividing the substance for there is one person of the Father, another of the Son and another of the Holy Ghost. For the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost is all one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal, such as the Father is, such as the Son, and such is the Holy Ghost. Now this is a statement that the early church adopted as a way to explain what we believe about the Trinity, while also acknowledging that there is nothing else in all creation to compare this to, thus we have some difficulty seeing and explaining it in our way of viewing the world. So why do I say this? Why do I bring this up? Because it's very clear that in this moment of Jesus on the cross, that with just moments of his life on earth left, the relationship between Jesus and God the Father for the first time in all history was strained. As we step back from that and ask why someone who existed in perfect unity with equal glory to the Father could be in this place, we're reminded of why Jesus came to earth, and that was to take the punishment for our sins so that we could be forgiven. The wrath and punishment for every sin in the history of the world was placed on Jesus in that moment. And that sin being placed upon him caused him to be separated and strained in his relationship to the Trinity. So the agony of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he cried out to God to find another way is because he knew this was coming. He knew that the unity that they experienced would be strained for the first time in all of history. So as we approach Easter here on this Friday before Good Friday, be reminded of the good news. The good news that Jesus suffered and died. He went through this suffering so that we may find life, grace, and peace. Let that encourage you and let that be a reminder of the generosity and love that Jesus had for you. As well, we'd love to worship with you this Easter, either online or in person. So next weekend, uh, April 3rd and 4th, we'll be celebrating Easter. So if you're in Lake Havasu or online, Saturday at 3.30 and 5 p.m., Sunday at 8, 9.30 and 11. If you're in Parker, worship with us Sunday at 11 a.m. We hope to see you there as we worship and celebrate the love and resurrection of Jesus. We'll see you next time, Calvary.